Hey what is up mortals, it is Hazel here with a new video for you. In this video we'll dive into the oldest animes ever made. I just wanted to greet you guys by saying, sit back and relax, you're in for a treat. So let's get started. But first, let's get one thing straight. Anime is an art form, just like those paintings you see in an old collector's attic. Art has been around a long time, and so is anime. Wow, I love my segues. Today we're talking about some of the oldest animes ever found and created, and then some anime that people often assume is the first ever anime. Alright, anime. Let's start with something simple, because, oh boy, this video will get deep. There's been a lot of confusion regarding which was the first anime ever created. Some have said Astro Boy was the first anime ever created, so let's start with that. Right off the bat, Astro Boy is not the first anime ever created. Okay, let's end the video. Wrap up. <laughs> no, but that doesn't mean it's not an essential foundation for anime. Astro Boy was considered the first ever popular Japanese animation that became a hit worldwide. Sorry Astro Boy, but you aren't the first anime ever created. I hope you're not disappointed like those kids in 2016 when they realized their first comment was actually 16. Although Astro Boy wasn't the first anime, I wouldn't be mad if others would think that Astro Boy is the first anime, as I said earlier, was the pioneer of modern day animation in Japan that influenced the western style and, more importantly, the worldwide scale. Astro Boy's original first appearance was from a shonen stated as a monthly magazine for boys. Tough break every other gender that wasn't considered a boy in the 1950s, back in April of 1951. For context, Astro Boy first appeared when Walt Disney, yes, THE Walt Disney, was still roaming around the soon-to-be Walt Disneyland. Wild. By 1952, Astro Boy would finally get his own serialized manga and not just a featuring in some magazine. The manga would be such a success that it would eventually lead to the series most people would know him for, Astro Boy, the TV series. People give them a break. The the TV series was a big deal for them. I apologize if it's not your typical 26 word subtitle on an anime nowadays. It took Astro Boy or Mighty Adam in Japan a decade to become an anime from a manga. The wait was a massive success as not only was it a hit in Japan, it was a hit in the good old United States of America where they preferred the name Astro Boy instead of the name Mighty Adam. Appreciate it, America. Astro Boy would then continue its popularity to this day as it was recently shown that an Astro Boy reboot is in the works but still has not seen the light of day. The movie's subpar though. Apparently Astro Boy was born in April of 2003 and is a depiction of what people saw kids in the 21st century would be. Our writer was born in 2004 and now he feels sad knowing this information. Appreciate it, Mighty Adam. Astro Boy was the pillar for every modern shonen. Heck, not even shonen was but just modern anime in general. It showed people that anime is a proper art form and is beautiful. And oh yeah, it can profit a ton too. Before we move to the two most likely candidates, I'd like to talk about an anime that was also released in the 1960s that some do think is one or, if not, the oldest anime ever created. But it's not. This is Saizei-san, an anime that was created in 1969. <laughs> Funny number. An anime about a traditional Japanese family that aired on Sundays in Japan. So if it's from 1969, why did we even talk about it? A handful of people believe that Saizei-san is the first anime ever created because its relevance to anime in the 60s and even now is unmatched. Literally. Why, you may ask? Take a guess. I'll give you time. Alright, that's enough time. If you guess because it's really good and made the other countries really like anime invest in it and now we live in a society where we get served by anime mates, you'd be wrong. And shame on you for guessing on that. It's because, just wait for it, it has 7,500 plus episodes and it's still going. That's more than One Piece, Pokemon, and Dragon Ball combined. Oh my lord. We could get more in depth about how Saizei-san became the longest running anime and quite frankly I think it's going to be number one for a long time judging by the second place. Yeah, it's safe to assume the record is safe in Saizei-san's hands. Crazy. To keep a long story short, Saizei-san is a traditional anime airing on Sundays in Japan. It's said to be a big hit there as it represents a standard Japanese household and is family friendly. Saizei-san really knows how to play the algorithm right. 
The list for the longest anime ever created is actually pretty fascinating as it features some anime that western people aren't familiar with. We might make a video on it soon in the channel, so stay tuned if you're interested in where One Piece's 1000 episodes rank. Let's take a step back and actually try to specify what we're looking for. Despite the animes we've already mentioned, the next couple of entries are actually shorts for various PSAs and just short films in general. One of the first shorts we're checking out is a film called Sakura ni Gaisen by Yasuji Murato. The Battle of the Monkey and the Crab in English is a film by Yasuji Murato. The release date can be messy as there are claims that Sakura ni Gaisen was released in 1937, 1927, or 1917, making it the oldest anime we've talked about today. So what exactly is Sakura ni Gaisen? Well, we had our writer watch the whole film, and here's what he had to say. It's, it's dark. dark. Very dark. Apparently the film is about two crabs or humans with crab ears? It follows the young crab and the mentor crab as the older crab train the young one to become a samurai. After they take some seeds and plant them on a tree and the older crab proceeds to yell at the tree and even threaten it. Wow, this is dark. The scene then transitions to a scene where a monkey named Sarukichi who then offers to help the two crabs grab the fruits from the tree. After some monkey business, I'm such a good writer, the monkey betrays the two crabs and takes the fruits for himself. Like any person, the crabs chase the monkeys down the hill to recover the food. What happens next? I kid you not, the monkey, Sarukichi, throws a fruit at them. How do I put this? He kills the crab. He throws a fruit at the older crab and kills it. Why isn't this in the top 10 anime betrayals? The monkey earned their trust and betrayed them, thus emotionally damaging the young crab. Move aside, Blackbeard, Kaguya from Naruto. Sarukichi just blew all of you away. After that tragic mishap from Sarukichi, the young crab went to his uncles to seek revenge. They agreed and they all hid around Sarukichi's house to plan an assassination. After Sarukichi indulges in the fruits he stole, he then returns home to get a surprise of a lifetime. Being assassinated by three crabs. The development in this story is better than in the entire second season of The Promised Neverland. Yes, I just said that. It had to be said. So what did we learn from this story? Never take something that owns to a crab. And oh yeah, don't kill. Anyone. Just by normal standards. Don't. Just don't kill. But fun fact. If this was actually made in 1927, as most claim, this puts it a year early than the infamous Steamboat Willie, considered the first ever cartoon. Yeah, there's no punchline. I just thought it was neat. Very important note here that there are actually one film also named, The Monkey and the Crab, made by Setaro Kiyatama and produced by Nikatsu. The film was set to be released in 1917, putting it ahead of the 1927 version we just discussed. The main reason we talked about Yasuji's film is because the 1917 Monkey and the Crab are partially unknown as of right now. There's no surviving film that can be watched. It's considered lost media, so you've got to wonder how they even knew about its existence in the first place. Probably through archives. What am I saying? The next item on our list is anime Yurashima Taru made by Setaro Kiyatama in 1918. You may have remembered Setaro Kiyatama from that time we mentioned about his lost 1917 film, Then Monkey and the Crab, which was 40 seconds ago. The film follows a normal fisherman that finds a turtle locked up. After then freeing the turtle, he gets repaid by being invited to an underwater world or palace and then receives a gift on his way out. That was actually really wholesome compared to Sakurichi's murderer story. Well, that's what happens when you start to compare a Save the Turtles film to a literal assassination revenge arc. It makes you wonder if Setaro's version of the monkey and the crabs was more wholesome. Hmm. Mm, probably not. Sarukichi deserved what happened to him. Setaro's Ushajima Taro was produced by Mikatsu, a name that has popped up in multiple old anime films that we've discussed and just in general. Taking a look at where Nikatsu is now, it's said that they are one of the oldest distributors of films in Japan, also stating that after World War II, they struggled and ended up... Oh wait, that's not family-friendly Turtle Magic Land stuff. Uh, let's just say in the 70s they made corn by the late 90s. They would eventually be picked up by Namco, a company best known for making Digimon Survive. Oh, yeah, and also Pac-Man. So, Sarukichi was kind of a bad monkey. 
If Sadokichi had just learned how to grow his fruits, he wouldn't have to be assassinated for stealing some fruits. If you're interested in planting or just learning new skills in general, then our sponsor for today's video should help. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. With the services Skillshare provides, you can get access to many in-depth tutorial videos on basically anything you want to learn. Each class that they have is bound to help you with your creative endeavors. Do you want to learn how to make videos like this one? Do you want to learn how to write scripts or edit audio? Skillshare has you covered. And with our link, you can have a 14-day free trial. So what are you waiting for? Click the link now and get 14 days worth of classes free! Link in description below. The next film is by far the most popular frontrunner for the oldest anime, and it might very well be. Namakura Gatana is considered the oldest confirmed anime to have ever been found. Keep that in mind. It's going to come in convenience later on. Namakura Gatana, or the Dull Sword, is a story about a samurai who gets a deal of a lifetime on a sword. The problem is, it's a dull sword. Writing skills are unmatched. Namakura Gatana, made by Gunichi Kouchi, is considered one of the three forerunners of Japanese animation, along with Setaro's 1917 Monkey in the Crabs and a film called Genkanban no Maki. Despite being grouped as the forerunners of anime in general, only Namakura Gatana has officially been restored and found. Even then, the video that circulates the site right now is still considered partially lost, as it is said that the video is not the full version. After a century of finding, we've only gotten the abridged version. All in all though, it's a good watch for a film from a century ago. The film follows a samurai who stumbled upon a shop and sees a sword for a deal. Even back then, the spirit of Black Friday lives in all of us. After getting an agreement, the samurai would try his katana out for a test run, though I'll be honest, he wasn't the greatest at it. I mean, props to him, I couldn't be in a sword fight, I'm just not sharp enough for it. Our writer would like to once again show his unmatched humor. It's been fun narrating his writing. After testing out the katana, he finds an old man who, with the context of the video, which there are very few of, is going to slice him thus killing him. This is Sarukichi all over again. Judging by his sword skills earlier, we could tell who won this battle between an old man and a samurai. After getting owned by the old man, he gets tossed conveniently to the next scene as we see another person he plans to use the sword on. And this time, the person fights back and does not just jump into the air as the old man did. He gets racked in the process and gets stepped all over even. After getting severely overpowered, he then does what any other samurai would do. Throw a tantrum in the middle of the forest and throw his sword up in the air, which then causes his blade to bend to the sheer amount of embarrassment his katana feels for him. Probably just because it's a cheap sword he got for a single coin, but it's fun to think about. Usually this is where the list ends. Since Namakura Gatana is the only official anime that's said to be found and confirmed from 1917, which is also considered the year that anime truly started, it should end this debate, right? Well, not exactly. Although Namakura is the official one, there is reason to believe that it is not the oldest anime ever created. In 2005, a film from as early as 1907 was considered the first anime ever. The film in question is Katsudo Shashin. Little is known about the film as the creators of it were never found. Hmm. Huh. There is debate whether or not Katsudo Shashin was really from 1907 due to the lack of information around it. The film is just a sailor boy writing that what appears to be kanji on a board. Like other old animes, the film is choppy and has a few still images considering it was 1907. It's fascinating to see where it allegedly all began. The film has a mystique to it considering the creators were never really named and just the overall feel of it. It feels like an anime time capsule. I think the most impressive thing about this film is that it got a 5 out of 10 on my anime list, which cements it as one of the greatest anime to be ever created. Thank you all for indulging yourselves in the, all this information thus far. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are a few more things that I'd like to go over before the video ends. Firstly, if you're in the mood for some great storytelling, we the Celestials have got you covered. Our We the Celestials, My Hair Academia, and Naruto What of channels retell the story of their namesake anime with a twist. Check it out if you're interested. Secondly, on behalf of We the Celestials, I'd like to thank everyone involved in the production of today's awesome content. 
Their details can be found in the description below. Lastly, if you're interested in what we do here at We The Celestials, then I'd like to extend you an invitation to join the team. The only caveat is that we only accept members from 16 years and up to join our crew. You can sign up for whichever category fulfills your interest by joining the recruitment discord using the link in the description below. We're always looking for members to join us. Well, that's it from us for today's video. So thank you all for watching and have a great day.